I don't want to talk about the questions we've gone through. Though it's savagery, now it's quizery. I've asked all my cues, and you've tried to answer. I have more to say, one more quiz to play. The winner takes it all. A cash prize is not small. 25,000 G's could be your destiny. Oh, H cuties, hold up the lighters. Get out the tissues. Welcome to Sunday night. Never miss a Sunday show. Hope you're feeling all right. You're about to participate in the world's largest game show live right here, right now, right here, right now on HQ. Mm-hmm. I'm your host with a hollow French toast, sipping French roast, telling the story of the ghost, Scott Rogowski, a.k.a. Triviano Rivera, a.k.a. Quizdrubal Cabrera, a.k.a. Dan Quisenberry, live at Budokan with all 865,000 plus of you, nearly 1 million players in the game right now, including Larry at Summer Stage, Ruben Chaim, Josh and Evan, who just got engaged, and Mazel. Happy birthdays to Jen, double N, turning 33, Angie, turning 34, Thomas from Canada, turning 24, Jessica, 22, Chris's dad, Ken, Danielle at Galaxy Fart, turning 26. You're 26 now, Danielle. Grow up a little bit. Maybe get a different Twitter name. And a belated happy birthday to the oldest living mutant, James Gibson. If you are just joining me for the first time tonight, well, you couldn't have picked a better debut. I do need to explain what you're about to see is not typical of how we do things here on HQ. Manish Tana Halila is that why is this night different? Because tonight I'm giving out $25,000 and it's not being split up among the winners. No, you're not winning 78 cents or $1.13 or two and a quarter. And I'm not asking 12 questions. I'm asking as many questions as it's going to take until there is one HQD left standing who is taking home the entire $25,000 prize. Can you believe it? That is life-changing money. You will also be winning a celebratory phone call from your truly host Malone, Quiz Khalifa. 25K, it's going to take you till next Tish Above to spend all that. Do you have an extra life tonight? I really hope you have at least one. They're going to come in handy. An extra life can keep you in the game if you get a question wrong. You can get them by referring friends to play or playing five days in a row. So keep that in mind for the next time we give it a lot of money. After Q14, Extra Lives cannot be used tonight, okay? You're going to be on your own. But up until that point, and including Q14, an Extra Life will keep you in the game if you're out. You got all that? Housekeeping is done. You're ready for your big money Sunday game. It is time to set the gear shift for the high gear of your soul. Time to test your wits against the trivia industrial complex. Time to compete live against nearly 1 million others from around the world for $25,000. Don't you feel like you're part of something special? You are! Is your phone charged? Your friends know not to call you in the middle of the game. That could be a $25,000 mistake. So definitely tell them to hold your calls. Are you distracted by the chat there? You can swipe that to the right and poof, it's gone. No more chat. All right? Ready? Freddy? It's time to quiz with me and get some money. Strap on your thinking caps. Hike up your smarty pants and let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get the show on the road. 930,000 players in the game for Cumero, numero uno. According to an old expression, you shouldn't count your chickens before they what? Hatch, graduate college, or hashtag follow back. What came first, the question about chickens or the question about eggs? Who's on team follow back? Not me and not these chickies. It's Hatch, guys. You don't count your chickens before they hatch. They're in the egg form first, and then they pop out, right? Hopefully. 910,840, like Richard Hatch, surviving to Q2. Mick Jagger and Keith Richards are members of what legendary rock band? The Rolling Stones, The Beatles, or The Who? If you get a question wrong, you're out of the game unless that extra life keeps you in it. We got a classic question right now about classic rock. I have a feeling I'm gonna be mighty depressed when I see the results here. Mick and Keith, the Glimmer Twins, are still tasting that brown sugar, still painting it black, still performing with the Rolling Stones 56 years later. The Rolling Stones, baby, is your answer here. Give me shelter. 870,317 don't need it. We lost 33,000 of you there. Oh, 
sucking in the 70s and the 20 teens. Before we get to Q3, let me tell you about this Thursday night, guys. We're doing a theme night. That's right. Theme night is back on Thursday, and you're going to love this one. We did movies, we did science, we did tech, and now we're doing dinosaurs. Yes, sirree, Bobby. Brush up on your Cretaceous, your Jurassic, your Triassic, your Coca-Cola classic, all of it. We're testing you on it. Stegosaurus, Triceratops, you know the difference? Study up now. It's time for Q3. From 1994 to 1999, Nelson Mandela was the president of what African nation? South Africa, Egypt, or Nigeria? Madiba! Born exactly 100 years ago this past Wednesday, Mandela was a global icon of justice and social progress. Following his nearly three-decade imprisonment, a long holiday as he called it, he was inaugurated in 1994 as the first black president of South Africa. We love you. 736,709, getting this one right. No Mandela effect here, although he still lost 130,000. You should know that. Q4, which of these rappers is also the name of a university in Des Moines, Iowa? Future, Drake, or Chance? Started from the bottom of this quiz, and now you're here. Still somewhat towards the bottom. There's <laughs> still plenty of questions to go. They are starting to get harder. If you took care to pick Drake, you're right for what? You're not upset. Drake University is in Des Moines, Iowa. Has been since 1881. HQDs, do you love me? 580,144 of you going non-stop. The rest of you just wasn't in God's plan tonight. Uh, Q5. 14 pounds is equivalent to what British unit of measurement? Ton, kilo, or stone? HQDs, do you love me? Do you need me? Ba -na 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 -na. I'll never, ever, never, ever leave me. Never, ever leave me. I see you, Great Britain, with your crisps and your chips and your biscuits and your extremely non-metric measurement units like the stone, which is equivalent to 14 pounds. 443,546 like a rolling stone gathering no moss here to Q6. The rest of you, 150,000 plus stone free to ride the breeze right out of this quiz. Come back tomorrow. Q6. Which of the Best Picture Oscar winners contains an explanation of game theory? Million Dollar Baby, A Beautiful Mind, or Slumdog Millionaire? The term game theory has a deeper meaning than where you plan to drop in Fortnite. Where are we dropping, boys? It's an economic examination of rational thinking memorably featured in the John Nash biopic, A Beautiful Mind. The best result would come <laughs> from everyone in the group. Because I need you, and I want you. I want a beautiful mind here at Q6. How many of you have an H cutiful mind? Oh, 253,640. Crunching all the numbers tonight. We lost 200,000 plus at Q6. Can you crunch Q7? Hearst Magazines helped transform the Style Network into a TV channel using what magazine's name? Esquire, Vogue, or Cosmopolitan? Who's thirsty for Hearsty? Founded by William Randolph in 1887, but you only have to go back to 2012 when the Style Network spruced themselves up by becoming the Esquire Network. Perhaps needed some more sprucing because uh, that network shut down in 2017. 139,034. Got style for miles tonight, at least for Q8. We lost another 130,000. Yeah, there, we're just chip, chipping away. Chippewa Falls tonight. Q8. Bernoulli's principle would most likely be used in the design of what? An airplane wing, nuclear reactor, or rechargeable battery? Asked about Bernoulli not too long ago. He's Swiss. Sounds Italian. Born in Netherlands, I believe. He's Swiss. Doesn't matter for this question. If you get a kick out of snooping on anonymous strangers arguing on the internet, check out the forums devoted to fighting over exactly how an airplane wing generates lift. That said, people, people pretty much agree that Bernoulli's principle plays a very key role. 109,762 know their physics. Do you know your quizics? We're getting quizzical at Q9. Which of these sexy Chris's has been named people's sexiest man alive? Chris Pine, Chris Hemsworth, or Chris Pratt? Half a million players still watching here. Because remember, one person is winning 25,000. This is exciting whether you're in the game or out of the game. If you're in it, you can still win it. If not, you're going to witness some quiz theory tonight. There is one Chris to find them, one Chris to rule them all. How can you choose? They're all too sexy. 
Mm. Pratt and Pine are undeniable hunks, grade A non-GMO mm. beefcake, but only Hems can claim the sexiest man alive mantle, which he did back in 2014. Chris Daddy, Chris Hemsworth, 75,751 are still alive, still sexy, getting Q10, which of these synonyms for a trinket is the oldest? Jim crack, brick a brack, or knick knack? Many thousands of you using their extra lives there to keep you in the game. I like to see that. My favorite synonym, tchotchke, obvi, but that's not listed here. These all sound alike and mean the same thing, but which came into usage first? Bric-a-brac is a French coinage from the 19th century. Knick-knack first appeared sometime in the 17th century, but Jim Crack traces itself back to Middle English in the 14th century. And what we have here, folks, is a savage question our first of the night a major malfunction for 70,000 of you at Q10 but 10,391 truly madly deeply surviving this savage garden savage question and moving on to Q11 normally the penultimate question but not tonight we'll find out how much it's going to take Q11, the term skid row was coined as a pathway for what kind of workers? Loggers, taxi drivers, or fish sellers? Skid row, you know the band, you know the word. While it now means an economically depressed area, a skid row or road was originally a cleared path for lumber yards to transport logs. The process is called skidding. Loggers is your answer. Skid marks, that's something else entirely. 11,393. Clearing a path to Q12, a bunch of you using your extra life, and it worked. You got this one right. Q12, which of these characters first appeared in the 1930s in a magazine called Weird Tales? Godzilla, Conan the Barbarian, or Batman? Don't turn around, oh, oh, oh. To Comic Con's in town, oh, oh, oh. Shout out Comic Con, everybody out there in San Diego right now. Maybe you're still in this game. $25,000 could buy you a whole lot of comic books or... Those pop socket, what are those things? I don't know what they sell down there. Weird Tales was a pop pulp fantasy magazine in the 20s and 30s. Contributors included H.P. Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard, who created Conan the Barbarian. And who created Conan the Librarian? Well, that was Weird Al. 7,826 of you, don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? You know it, you knew this question. You're getting Q13. Which of these musicals features the song I Honestly Love You? Xanadu, The Boy From Oz, or Jersey Boys? Oh, you might have thought it was Xanadu because of the Olivia Newton-John connection. But here's some oh trivia Newton-John for you. I Honestly Love You was co-written by Peter Allen on whose life the jukebox musical The Boy From Oz was based. Boy from Oz is your answer, and boy, do we have another savage question here at Q13. Ouchie, wowie, oh, the HQ manatee. 1869 of you love HQ. You honestly love HQ. You survived Q13. We're heading to Q14. Remember, this is the final question on which you can use your extra life. So you got one, you use it here. Q14, which of these Star Trek TV series features a scene set the furthest in the past? The Next Generation, Voyager, or Discovery? Q14, the final frontier? Not quite, I feel like I'm gonna be asking some more tonight. Voyager does set most of its episodes in the future, but in one episode called Death Wish, the ship is transported back to the time of the Big Bang. It's hard to go any further in the past than that. Voyager is your answer. Six. 158, the minority getting this one right here, or the smallest plurality, okay, nerds? You are living long and prospering. On to Q15. Which of these boxing legends lost to the fewest different opponents? Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, or Mike Tyson? Nearly one million HQD start of the game. We're down to just 658, competing for $25,000 right now. The true goat, the greatest of all time. He floated like a butterfly, he stung like a bee, but he lost to five different contenders in his pro career. That's Ali. So did Iron Mike. However, Smokin' Joe Frazier took four losses to just two different opponents, Ali and George Foreman. 249 of you are the goats tonight. 
The rest of you, down goes H Cuties. You're out. You came close, but no E Sig tonight. Q16 for the 249 players left. No extra lives. No safety net. It's all up in here. Q16. Which of these directors has not appeared in one of his own films? David Fincher, Stanley Kubrick, or Francis Ford Coppola? You've made it so far. This is the farthest we normally go here at HQ. Sometimes it's 15 questions. Most of the time it's 12. We're at 16 tonight. Coppola popped up in Apocalypse Now as a director of a camera crew filming in a village. Kubrick can be seen in Eyes Wide Shut, but so far, David Fincher has stayed behind his own camera. What's in the box? What's in the box? 104 of you are in the box. You're staying in this fight club right now. The rest of you, 140,000, are gone, girl. But we got Q17 right now for my Stanley H. Kubricks left in the game. The part of the human body named for the Roman goddess of love is located closest to which of these? Waist, lips, or neck? Can you feel it? Can you feel that tension mounting, ratcheting? 104 players left in this game. $25,000 going to one of them. It's going to one. If nobody wins, we roll that money over, baby. Now, when it comes to lovely sounding body parts, it's hard to beat dimples. We've got two sets of dimples on both cheeks. These and the ones over here, the dimples of Venus, your butt dimples, right at, right at the lower back. They're closest to your waist. Oh boy, Alberto, 31 H cuties left. Mike Piazza, shout out Mike Piazza. 31 players, come waste your time with me. Is this Quiz the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory? Because it's on fire, baby. 31 players left for Q18, $25,000 prize could be Yours, yours, yours. Which of these is not a translated name for Mount Everest? Mountain of the Spirit, Goddess of the Valley, or Peak of Heaven? Trente y uno. Jugadores left in this game tonight. Whew, starting to sweat, starting to sweat. I know you're sweating. I'm sweating a little bit too. It's a little warm in here. We're going into thin air at Q18. This question lives between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. Everett's, Everest's Tibetan name translates to goddess of the valley, and its Sanskrit name translates to peak of heaven. But mountain of the spirit, that describes Manaslu, the eighth highest mountain in the world, also in the Himalayas. And then there were 10, just 10 players left in this game. We started with about a million of you. We've whittled it all the way down, cut to the bone, flaying off layers here as there are final 10, our top 10 H cuties still in this game for Cumero numero 19. The titular star of Magic Mike got his show business break in a music video for which artist? Ricky Martin, Robbie Williams, or Shakira? Oh, you wanna be like Mike. You wanna be like Mike, you gotta know Mike right now. $25,000 gets you a lot closer to being like Mike. Dancing fool Channing Tatum, who plays the magical Mike in question, shook his bonbon in the video for the appropriately named Ricky Martin hit, She Bangs! She Bangs! Shout out Menudo! And shout out HQ -do, the band I'm about to form with you, the four players left right now. The final four. H cutie still in this game. Oh my goodness. You're quizzing the Vita Loca and you're getting Q20. 20th question of the night. Folks, this could determine it. There could be one winner here walking away with $25,000. Do you feel it? I'm feeling something. I'm feeling it right now in a big, big way. Here it is, baby. Could be the final question of the night. It might all boil down to this, Q20. The classical composer known as the father of the string quartet has two of what in his tomb? Skulls, sets of gloves, or violins? This is trivia from the crypt. I'm the crypt keeper, I guess, the quiz keeper. After Joseph Hayden, the father of the string quartet, was buried in Vienna in 1809, his head was stolen by a paraphrenologist who wished to study his cranial anatomy. It was a pseudoscience back then, all the rage. Decade later, the skull was returned 
And now there were three. Three H cuties left. You used your skull on that one, and you're still in the game. I guess one person did not answer in time. Remember, you have to answer within 10 seconds of my asking the question. So we lost one. We shaved another one off here. Our final three, terrific three right now. Trey's Leches, you're getting Q21. Hey, our quiz can drink. Including the base, which of these monuments is tallest? The Washington Monument, Statue of Liberty, or the Gateway Arch? I've been to all of these. I just saw one last week in DC. The Washington Monument is mighty impressive at 555 feet. 560 on Tinder. Lady Liberty, standing tall at 305 feet, she should be in the WNBA. But reaching a peak of 630 feet, the most majestic is St. Louis's Gateway Arch. For $25,000, oh, my Lanta. We lost another one. And then there were two, just two, still in this game. After nearly one million started, I'm meeting the two of you in St. Louis. We're leaving the City Blues right now for Q Moreau 22 with our final two HQDs going head to head, mano y mano, brain for brain right now. Oh my goodness. I, 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 I'm kind of freaking out right now. This hasn't happened in a long time. We used to have one winner back in the early days of HQ. We've been doing this for a long time now. Frankly, I'm shook. I'm a bit shooketh. And one person is about, possibly about to win $25,000. Let's find out if this is going to be a Q22. Which of these is the actual name of one of the best known characters in To Kill a Mockingbird? Joseph, Jeremy, or Joan? Now that our quiz can drink, we're taking a shot of tequila here at Q22. Tequila! Mockingbird, Harper Lee's classic, is filled with nicknames. There's Scout, real name, Jean Louise, Boo Radley, real name, Arthur, and Jem, whose actual Christian name is Jeremy. Jeremy's spoken, and Jeremy says, we got a winner, baby! Woo! $25,000! You win! You win! You win! You win! Winner, winner, all the chicken dinners! You can have a chicken dinner every night the rest of the year, King Pugs! You answer 22 questions correctly in a row. The odds of that are like in the trillions. You did it, buddy. You are the smartest, the bestest, the H cutest, the most wonderful HQ winner of recent memory. $25,000 going straight to your bank account. You, you, you might be feeling your pockets are, are weighing you down a little bit right now. A little heavier right now, yeah? Well, I, I'm so thrilled for you, buddy. King Pugs did it. I'm going to call you soon. You might be on the news tomorrow. Who knows? How about that, folks? You can put in the books, put it on the board. Yes! That's how we do HQ winner take all. $25,000 given out to King Pugs. One million you started the game. You want to play again, don't you? You're hooked now, aren't you? Well, come back. Play with us every day. We're twice a day live during the week, 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. Yes, tomorrow 3P, tomorrow night 9P, and Thursday night, don't forget, Dinosaur Night, Dino Might, Thursday 9PM Eastern Time, come back and join us, will you? I'll see you tomorrow, follow HQ on Twitter, at HQ Trivia, we give out hints, maybe some extra lives, remember, play five days in a row, get those extra lives, they'll come in handy, could help you win $25,000, like it helped King Pugs tonight, until I see you again, Thanks for playing. Exit through the side doors. Tip your wait staff. I'm Scott Rogowski signing off saying, Good night, Japan. I'll miss your Kentucky Fried Chicken and your sparkling whale-free seas. <laughs>